What'd you say? I guess we are. I have to make sure I don't have. Oh. Good morning, everybody. On this gorgeous, gorgeous day, we are here um, for a Rotary meeting. I'm Jane Klingman Scott, the president uh, this year of the Rotary. Today, we're having a program from the Samaritas Senior Apartments in Muskegon. I'm looking forward to this one. We'll start with a Pledge of Allegiance and then a little literacy message and a reflection from Rich Berry. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And as Rich approaches, you'll get you a little literacy lesson. This week I was a little frustrated because I ran out of things to read and I remembered I can just walk down to the end of the block to go to my little free library. So I looked up a few facts about this. It was started in 2012 as a nonprofit. Worldwide, there are 150,000 little libraries and they circulate 70 million books a year. And in Muskegon County, if you look on their map, I counted 41 little libraries. So if I did the math correctly, that's 19,000 free books are circulating in Muskegon County. Now, is that cool? That's cool. So I should probably start with uh, Lord of Wisdom after that, and love. We pray that you bless this meeting and everyone here today. Help us have fun, yet productive discussions that will broaden our perspectives. Help us to take the various ideas presented and think of ways to flesh them out. And if we do disagree, let it be on the content and not the personality that conflicts. Help us to be creative problem solvers and have great team spirit and help us find principles that we all can agree on and put those into action and make a positive difference in our community. Amen. Thank you everybody. Have a seat. Enjoy your lunch and we will be back in about 10 minutes with the program. And we are back. I'm glad to start the meeting, but I always feel a little bad about stopping the conversation. But you'll be here next week, so you can continue. So we're going to start the meeting with the introduction of uh, visiting Rotarians and guests, and Susan Hausman, Annette Jack, Pam Babbitt, all have guests. Is there anyone that I miss that has a guest? All right, then we will start with our introduction. I will give you the microphone and just get right, right in front of that. Okay. Hi, I'm Sue Hausman. My guest today is my friend and colleague, Jennifer Carter. She's a community outreach liaison for Harbor Hospice. Hello, Annette Jack, and with me today is my husband, John. I know a lot of these people. There you go. Okay, there, Pam. You know the group name. I am Pam Babbitt, and this is my friend, Steve Tomzak. He's with Pier Point Mortgage, and he's interested in becoming a member. Thank you for having me today. Thanks for coming, Steve. Uh, since we have no student guest, bunch of slackers enjoying their summer vacation. We will be uh, ready to go right into our program and Annette Jack is doing the introductions. Thank you, Jane. I'm excited to introduce our program today. Samaritas is an organization that my husband John and I have supported for over 50 years. 
We believe in the mission of service and we trust the expert and caring way that they deliver the service. We have personally benefited from the organization in two ways. One, one of our five children was adopted through the organization. And also, my father received senior care when it was necessary for him to move from his home. My husband has served on the board of directors, the foundation board, and is currently on Samaritas Advisory Council. Today, two Samaritas staff members will acquaint you with the organization and share details about the interesting building that we've seen emerging on the corner of uh, Spring Street and Clay. Sheila Morris is a Muskegon native who joined Samaritas in 2002 and is now Director of Affordable Living for Samaritas. Sheila and her husband Scott are the proud parents of two recent Reeths Puffer graduates. Dave Gilman joined Samaritas in 2021 as De Development Director serving West, Central, and Northern Michigan. Dave and his wife, Jennifer, are the proud parents of four children, ranging in age from 27 to nine. Dave? Well, good afternoon. Thank you much, I appreciate that. Can you hear me okay? All right, uh, Annette, John, thank you so much for your uh, advocacy and your friendship and uh, all that you do for Samaritas, grateful for you. Uh, to the whole Rotarian team here, we're so grateful for the opportunity to join you today and uh, introduce you to some of the things that, that Samaritas has been doing. And Sheila will be real excited to introduce you to what's happening here in Muskegon in just a few minutes. So I wanna give you a little bit of an overview uh, of Samaritas. For many of you, you may not be familiar with us. So I'm gonna introduce you to the general organizational structure. Um, can you give me the first slide, please? Samaritas is uh, in its 88th year. So some of you may be going, I don't really know much about Samaritas. Well, part of the reason for that is we were originally founded as Lutheran Social Services of Michigan. So it hasn't been very long that we've been Samaritas. In 2016, we rebranded and changed our name to make it uh, a little bit less specific to a single denomination and let ourselves be much more broad so that folks from other uh, affiliations could feel like they could be uh, welcomed and part of what we do. So we're, uh, we're pretty excited to be under the banner of Samaritas and have an opportunity to serve people across the state of Michigan. Um, give me the next slide, please. Samaritas is, oh, sorry. There we go. Samaritas is uh, literally across the entire state of Michigan. We're in more than 40 communities where we serve uh, with a number of different services. We have more than 1,400 employees, and we serve over 15,000 people in the state of Michigan, the lower peninsula of the state of Michigan. This is our vision. We connect people with families and communities, empower them to live their fullest life possible, and create a ripple effect of transformation. So that's, uh, that's a pretty high aspiration to reach towards. And we do that in a number of ways that um, serve children and families, uh, senior adults, um, a number of populations that are particularly vulnerable in different ways that we'll go through over the next couple of minutes together. So we'll I'll start with foster care and family preservation. Uh, in the state of Michigan, we are the largest private foster care and adoption agency in Michigan. And uh, we serve uh, throughout the state in this capacity. And we're pretty excited to report that um, we are doing something that it's kind of surprising. We're working ourselves sort of out of a job over time. Uh, the foster care population continues to decline as services to help preserve families rather than remove children from families gain traction across the state. And those programs are very exciting, very cool, very successful. Um, I've only been with Samaritas since last year. It was fascinating to me as I joined 
the organization to learn about those programs and say, so what we're trying to do is really shift ourselves out of that job over time, which is a little bit surprising for people to hear that an organization wants to really stop doing something, right? So we're really pleased with uh, our amazing team and family preservation and the work that they're doing to help families stay together and deal with the crises and traumas that uh, are present in their families, help them through coaching, mentoring, um, bringing other resources into those families for them to be able to um, surmount the obstacles that otherwise may have children removed from some of those homes. So that's a pretty exciting thing. New Americans. <clears throat> Samaritas has been working in refugee services since World War II. So we've got a tremendous amount of experience doing this. Uh, last year we had um, over 2,000 people served uh, in the state of Michigan that we helped to resettle. And there's some great success stories connected with that. Um, this top line number is one of the ones that I think is just really wonderful. 83% of those folks were self-sufficient at 180 days, which is a great success. Um, there's a great number of things happening uh, across the state. Last year, as you all know, uh, Afghanistan had a tremendous flow of individuals fleeing uh, as the, the uh, situation destabilized there. In the state of Michigan, there were several thousand refugees that came to the state of Michigan. We resettled more than 700 across the state of Michigan, including here in West Michigan, uh, about 400, uh, including Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, and Muskegon. So that Afghan refugee network that we quickly put together last year uh, was very successful and those families are now in the process of changing from that emergency status, we're working with them through legal representation and the, the logistics of that process, to give them permanent status here in the United States so they can put down their roots and begin some really uh, great opportunities to build in our communities. Over in Detroit, the city of Detroit, as you can imagine, um, is very anxious to have people fill in the places that are now in a lot of places empty in the city of Detroit. And they've embraced the Afghan population and they're settling people in the city of Detroit with a lot of extra help and a lot of services. So there's a Detroit refugee network that we're really excited to see over the next year or two provide some great opportunities for those folks to begin things like entrepreneurship and building their own sub-community within the city of Detroit. If you're interested in learning more about that, I'd love to chat with you afterwards about that. Um, yeah, let me keep moving. Disability support. Uh, for many years, we've been assisting families and individuals with uh, disabilities um, in a number of different ways. One of those is residential services. I think Sheila will mention this again in a couple of minutes about uh, what happens in Muskegon. We have across the state residential facilities where individuals can live who can't live independently where we can provide those supports. And then there's also a support that we provide that's non-residential where we can come alongside individuals uh, to assist them in their, their daily living as well, which is a great service. Senior living. We have uh, five senior living communities across the state of Michigan, Grand Rapids, Cadillac, Traverse City, Saginaw, and Bloomfield Hills. There are continuum of care in a number of those where we have, it's, for instance, in Grand Rapids from independent living to up through memory care and assisted living. So the whole continuum exists there. We're pretty excited that Cadillac and Grand Rapids both last year were given four star status. So the success of those facilities in great care is really exciting to us to see that recognized. Our staff does just a tremendous job um, in making sure that the folks that are in our care are given the best possible care. There's some really interesting and innovative initiatives that our people are working on, that implementing a state-of-the-art memory care program that's been shown to slow the progression of dementia improve physical health and decrease anxiety. So that's really something very uh, innovative we're excited to see continue to grow and take root. We're also working with uh, Grand Valley State University and their nursing and architecture students to help us develop on-site geriatric nursing programs and to design new spaces for better mobility and cognitive engagement in our buildings. I had to read all that because it gets a little word salad, but there's really neat things happening alongside folks who are trying to continue to grow and improve through innovative practices in those facilities. It's wonderful things happening. Um, substance use disorder treatment. 
this is the youngest program in our, our repertoire. We added uh, behavioral health uh, treatment a number of years ago, and substance use disorder, as you can imagine, is such a large component of some of the other things we do. If you think about families where there's disruption to a family, where a child may have to be removed from the family, you've got potential issues with substance use disorders in the parents, and then as those children grow older, there's frequently substance use issues as they deal with trauma. So this is a very important program for us to continue to grow and adopt and bring into new communities across the state as we go. It's been extremely well received uh, as we grow and expand it over time. The client satisfaction score that you see on the screen is indicative of the success that we're seeing with that. In Detroit, we operate a really unique program um, called the Family Center in Detroit. This is a, a shelter for families that allows families to stay together while they're looking for permanent housing. So it provides supportive facility while they're doing that, which is unique. In a lot of cases, families can't live together um, in those kinds of spaces. It's a really uh, a cool program that I'm very excited to see us continue to grow and do great things with. Um, Lastly, I'm gonna hand over to Sheila, why don't you come on up. Uh, we have an affordable housing program that is across the state in a number of different locations that uh, we're really excited to see continue to grow. And that's where the jumping off point is for Sheila to talk to you both about that statewide program and specifically about Muskegon. Thank you everyone for having us here today. I am really excited to talk with you about Samaritas Affordable Living. Um, just a little bit about me. I have, um, I am a Muskegon native and um, love Muskegon. My family is all here in Muskegon. And um, so this particular property is special to my heart. Um, I've, I've uh, started out my career at, in Samaritas uh, as a part-time service coordinator when my kiddos were little and then worked into a, a management role and became the director of our affordable living division in 2018. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit about our journey to, to get here. It's taken about two years to get to the construction portion of, of our affordable living property. And wanted to share with you some, some pretty staggering statistics um, that are on the screen. And the average cost of housing in West Michigan per month is $1,068. And, and I'm sure we can all agree it's probably gone up since 20, <laughs> 2021. Um, and also the National Low Income Housing Coalition estimates that there is a shortfall of rental units available to low income houses to be nearly 205,000 just in the state of Michigan. That number is staggering. 205,000 folks are looking for housing that's not there that they can afford. Um, according to AARP, individuals are spending um, almost half of their income on housing and 40% less on food and 70% less on house health care. And for our seniors who are experiencing um, health, rising health care costs as they get older, that can be completely debilitating. So this really led to Samaritas um, wanting to be here in Muskegon. Um, we had the support of the city of Muskegon as well as the Muskegon Housing Commission. We worked with them extensively um, on our application with um, MISHTA for our low housing tax credits. For Samaritas as a whole, we have 15 affordable living properties across the Lower Peninsula. Two of them are family properties, 12 senior properties, um, and one persons with disabilities home that is affordable. And Muskegon will be our 16th affordable living campus. Who do we serve? We serve families, we serve seniors, we serve the disabled in affordable living. In 2021, we had over uh, 1,500 people served just in our affordable living division. Um, let's see. And um, we also 
will have over 1,000 apartments in, in our affordable living portfolio um, once we open our Muskegon property. Um, as you can see, this is a great under construction picture of, of our new affordable living site here in Muskegon. And as Annette said, it is um, right on the corner on, on Spring Street across from the United Way and Whit Buick. Um, we also, for those of you who might know, we also share a parking lot with Rake Brew Project as well. Um, so you can also see, um, I, I took one picture of one of the kitchens. Um, it got some great cupboards and a wonderful counter that you can uh, pull up some bar stools to. And so every unit um, will be a one bedroom apartment, 698 square feet. Um, and this project was made possible through Mishta. Um, we did receive tax credits for this property. And uh, what that means is that corporations, banking institutions, and individuals in affordable renting claim, can claim a tax credit against their tax liability annually for 10 years. Um, so that's what helped make this, this possible. Um, because of this tax credit, um, MISHTA will regulate um, who can apply and, and how they, they can move in. So this property particularly is for people that are 55 and older. Um, the head of household has to be 55 and older and all household members must be at least 50 years old. Um, all apartments will have modern appliances. Um, they have a Juliet balcony a refrigerator, stove, oven, microwave, dishwasher, and a space for a washer and dryer as well. Um, and uh, all rent will be based on, on income. Um, let's see here. Got my papers mixed up, sorry about that. Um, rent will range from $402 a month to $938 a month. Um, so that is below that, that average of housing um, across the state of Michigan. And income limits will, a minimum income limit of $13,560 for one person household, all the way up to $45,000 for a two person household at the highest. Um, and we are very grateful to the Muskegon Housing Commission um, and the city of Muskegon for their support. Um, specifically, the Muskegon Housing Commission has moved several of their housing choice vouchers over to be project-based vouchers. So those with extremely low income will be able to move into this property and we will be accepting other vouchers as well. So we anticipate that those with extremely low income will be able to move into this property. And we will begin taking applications in September, which is very exciting. We're getting calls every day. Um, I think that um, we, will, we will have a full property and live property very quickly. Um, some of the other amenities that we have at the property are a beautiful community room, a library, an on-site laundry room, and we also hope to have a community um, computer center or computer lab for our tenants. Um, many tenants won't be able to have a computer or internet access. So we are still looking for donations or grants um, to possibly fulfill that, that computer lab wish. Um, let's see. I also wanted to show just a few things that Samaritas um, does. We are great collaborators um, and you see a picture with the winter coat. We collaborated with another organization to bring winter coats in to our family property at um, our Adrian property because if their kids are anything like my kids, he went through two winter coats in one season because he went through a growing spurt. And, and some families just can't afford to buy two winter coats in one winter season. Um, we also see the, um, the garden center um, that's getting ready for planting, as well as the Kona ice. Um, our Allison House property 
during COVID, they wanted to get people out and about, and Kona Ice came and did a free session at their at their property, and each resident was able to pick out some some fun ice, Kona Ice, for their own, and they had an outdoor party. Um, I also wanted to share with you, along with affordable living at um, our Muskegon property, we will also be having our Muskegon foster care services, as well as our two family um, preservation programs, Family First, and then as well, Home Builders. Um, they will be housed in our, our new property here in Muskegon. And that, that is all I have today. And thank you very much. It looks like you are ready. <laughs> A wonderful presentation, very thorough, and I'm sure that it generates a number of questions. And so, um, would you like to join us? And any questions over here? I'm just wondering um, if you could explain what your home builders program is. Thank you. I, I will I will read it, what I have um, because that is not um, my my area of expertise. But the Home Builders Program is um, through our fam Child and Family Division, and it is an intensive family preservation service and reunification program for families with children, newborn to 17 years old returning from or at risk of placement into foster care group home or residential treatment, psychiatric hospitals, or juvenile justice facilities. I'm wondering if you anticipate Ukrainian refugees. Yes, we're, uh, we're preparing right now for that possibility. Um, the structures in the U.S. government, federal government, who handle those things, and then the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, which is the national organization that we coordinate with, are all preparing for that eventuality. As you probably have observed, a lot of the folks who have fled Ukraine are now in Poland and Germany and so on waiting to see what happens, whether they return to Ukraine or whether they need to continue to find a new place to put down roots. We're preparing for all those eventualities now. What we did last year with the Afghan refugees gives us a great platform and infrastructure to be able to move quickly when people begin arriving in the United States, and we're ready for that. This is really more of a comment than a question. If you are in need of any handicapped um, medical equipment, I have a collaboration with someone that I can get it for you for free or very low cost. So if you want to see me after the meeting. Thank you. I'm just curious if you're offering any supportive services in the new senior affordable housing. I'm so glad you asked this question. Um, yes, we are. Samaritas has taken the step. Um, so let me back up. Um, the, the tax credit program is a very slim program, and they do not allow um, companies to have social work or um, navigation be part of budgeted um, staff. Samaritas has said, that's needed. We need this, and it's part of our mission. Um, and so we have taken this step to create a resident navigator position at, at the new property that will help at people as they move in get services in that they may need to help stay independent for as long as possible and, and maintain those services. Um, throughout their their time with us at Samaritas. And we just received a grant uh, within the last couple of weeks that's actually funding that position here in Muskegon, so we're pretty excited for that. Yep. Let's give our guests and presenters another round of applause. <laughs> and, uh, contribution to the literacy program will be made in your name for being our guest today. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, today, birthdays, birthdays. Joan Schmidt has a birthday on July 31st. Jane Johnson on August 1st. And Rita Kavanas on August 3rd. I know Joan's with us, so let's sing her some happy birthday tunes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And I see Joan is reaching into her purse to give us a happy birthday present. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we are having our uh, vocational service. Uh, it's one of R Rotary's five avenues of service along with club service, community service, international service, and new generation. It calls on every Rotarian to work with integrity and contribute their expertise to the problems and needs of the world. And today I'm very happy to have one focusing on our member, Jason Bertoya. My name is Jason Bertoya. I'm the Managing Director of Muskegon Civic Theater. And I first joined Rotary because Ginny Sprague brought me to the first meeting and I thought this was a really great group of people that I wanted to spend more time with. So I'm born and raised here in Muskegon. I am the eldest of three Bertoya boys. Um, my family still lives in the area. I actually live about a block away from my mom in Roosevelt Park. My partner Nathan and I have been together for about two years now, and we just like to travel the state here in Michigan and hang out here in Muskegon. A lot of theater in my life, managing Muskegon Civic Theater, but also I direct at the Playhouse at White Lake, and I also still direct a high school program for Western Michigan Christian High School. So I'm the managing director of Muskegon Civic Theater. It's my job to oversee all the business aspect of the organization. So I do all the advertising, all the marketing, all the networking, and I'm essentially the face of the organization. So anytime we're on the news or anytime we're on the radio, it's my voice or my face that everyone gets to see, whether they like it or not. But um, over the last 15 years, I've built the musical theater program at Western Michigan Christian, and I've decided that this year is my last year there. Well, coming from a theater background, it's very easy to stand in front of a group. So um, anytime that I'm in front of the Rotary group, I feel like it's a good day. Um, but also, I have great personality. I'm in the public all, all the time. Anytime we have shows, I greet the audience. So. I love participating in the Rotary activities like uh, the Great Escape and parties in the park as often as I can, things like that where I can just be the face and greet people and participate in those activities with the public. Now we have a special occasion it's always special when we induct a new member. And so if John Nolan would come forth with his uh, inductee, Kendra Robinson. Hello, Rotarians. It's a special day for me as well, not only because Kendra's here, but because of what I read in our Rotarian magazine on page one, our new president, Jennifer Jones, had a very nice column about our clubs and our future, and Kendra represents that future for us in my book. Uh, Kendra was born and raised in Grand Rapids, graduated from Ottawa Hills High School. Uh, she's been a proud resident of Muskegon for 13 years now and is the mother of three. Talia, 12 years, Khalil, nine, and Brielle, four. And is also married to a proud big red, uh, Tiangelo Robinson. Kendra started running, and speaking of running, <laughs> she, that's when I saw her. Uh, I worked with Kendra on Law Day prep at Muskegon High School coaching some students that she had already been working with as part of a future ladies in the law club kind of a thing, I think it was. But I've also seen her running around town, not just for office, but running, running. Um, she ran middle distance in high school and ran um, 
so much that she enjoyed it to jump on the Western Michigan University track team as a walk-on and placed in the uh, MAC conference and in the nationals in the 400 meter. So if you are running, you're going to get beat by her. Um, she runs weekly now for fun and has connected with Run Muskegon. After graduating from Western with a degree in poli-sci and criminal justice, she earned her law degree from Cooley Law School and met her husband, T. Angelo, there. She's taught criminal justice and political science classes at Grand Rapids Community College and now serves the community of Muskegon County for seven years now as the senior assistant public defender at the Muskegon Public Defender's Office. She fights daily in the 14th Circuit Court to protect the rights of Muskegon's most at-risk children and criminal defendants. She says that if she was not a lawyer, she would have been a teacher. Kendra is active in numerous community and nonprofit organizations, including Mediation and Restorative Services, Fruitport Public Schools, Child Abuse Council of Muskegon, the Women's Division of the Chamber of Commerce, the Black Women Lawyers Association of Michigan, her church, where she's the youth ministry leader and staff to the criminal defense attorneys of Michigan. Her mom is also a pastor, uh, is a pastor in Grand Rapids with, I believe, 30 years of pastoral work. In her spare time, Kendra enjoys running <laughs> and traveling. And she's been to Africa, the Dominican Republic, and London, and I believe you've run in all of those countries. As for her motivation to join us in Rotary, Kendra states, I love being of service and working with youth. I want to be involved in broadening the minds of our youth, encouraging them to reach for limits that have never been attained. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce our club to Kendra well, I Robinson. Take a ship what am I shipping? an eye on him constantly. Fellow Rotarians and guests, the Rotary Club of Muskegon is privileged to induct a new member. You are beginning a great adventure in leadership, friendship, service to the community, and humanity. The Rotary Club of Muskegon has accepted you as a person of good character and high ethical standards with a heart of service. Your sponsor has invited you to be part of a worldwide organization dedicated to the fostering of service above self. It is through your own actions that you become a Rotarian. We encourage you to learn about Rotary by actively participating in the club, including attending meetings, social events, and service projects. It is my pleasure to give to you this pin that John took I told you, you have to watch them. Uh, I lost my place. You know what, you job number goes. Uh, and we ask you, we ask you to wear it proudly. Which one do we okay. have to run? 20,000 on it. Which one? I'd also like to challenge you to share the gift that has been given to you to be a representative of Rotary in the wider community by sharing the spirit of the four way test in your work, service, and play, and inviting those you meet along the way I to know. join this mission. Do you accept this challenge? That's where Jeff would make out paperwork yeah. like your dad. Put something up here. As so Rotarians, you know we work to enrich youth, and ensure health, develop communities, and promote peace. Please rise and welcome our newest Rotarian member. Congratulations. This is all for you. The four-way test, your object of Rotary, and your, Thank you. and your book. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you aboard. We have just two announcements. Um, one from the uh, Peace Building Committee that will be presented by um, Jane Klingman Scott. I think she's here. Okay, I think she is. Okay, the, the Peace Building Committee is working very diligently to put a program together for the community that will be on the uh, September 21st. We are bringing in a peace builder, 
uh, one of the Rotarian uh, peace builders to speak to us that day. It will be in the Rotary Park at four o'clock. Um, it's a really uh, not to miss occasion. At the same time that she will be presenting the issues of peace building, we will have our own uh, Muskegon talent, our youth, uh, presenting the work of many weeks to create uh, three different peace poles. Um, and that uh, is, the, the artistry that's involved in this is really fantastic. Just to see the peace poles would be worth the trip downtown. But we'll also be having poetry, music, cookies made by the Cookie Brigade of Rotary. You don't want to miss that either. And then the next day we will have, that will be our program at Rotary so that we will be fully inoculated or in, uh, included in the peace building process. We have another announcement, and this is a congratulations announcement to two of our members who were named uh, by the Chamber of Commerce as promising, uh, the 15 promising young people of the year. And Brandon Turnbull and Contessa Hood are among that 15. So let's give them a round of applause. We knew they were promising. That's why they're here. It will be at uh, four o'clock. Four o'clock. Um, I didn't forget this time. I have an opportunity to win, so <laughs> we will have our raffle, which Rich Berry is. Tim, our, yes. Oh, nine, two. Oh. <laughs> yes, I owe you a book. <laughs> And I have 099. For $5. All right. <laughs> well, I'm going to have a good day today, I know. It starts like that, it can only get better. Uh, we want to thank our visiting Rotarians and our guest. Uh, uh, Jennifer Carter, uh, John Jack, and Steve Tomzak. And we want to thank all of you for being here today. Um, next week is going to be a surprise. It's, uh, it, we're not quite sure how this is going to end up, but it's going to be fantastic. So come and, and, and join us for that. Um, all I can do is promise you good things. Let's stand and uh, end this meeting with the reciting of the four-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build good friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? <laughs>